want to feel like everyone around them. They naturally start to increase meat consumption as they get wealthier. Social conditioning again. Okay? And that is followed secondly by, of course, population increase. People can always get this the wrong way around. It is not population increase, the main fueler. It is increasing global wealth. Okay, kill figures have grown four to five fold since 1961. Poultry is up 12 fold since 1961 and 2014. And pigs, four to five fold. We have 1.5 million dairy cows just here in the UK alone. And two million calves born each year. There are still 14,500 dairy farms in the UK. All of them must be closed down. We need, therefore, to change the mindset. Why are there just a few of us here today? It's because of the mindset. The mindset has shifted from the 80s. We've got to get the mindset back, the fight back. Yeah? So, the mindset towards contributions and towards advocacy. Because as long as the kill figures increase so steeply, then we have to face up to it. Everything is not just happening at all. We are losing. Yeah? So how we define veganism in light of this deteriorating situation is now very important. Donald Watson, the former vegan scientist, said, Can time ever be ripe? for human reform unless it is ripened by human determination. How determined are we? How determined do we really need to be? And how much of our own time and our own effort are we prepared to give? To recognise injustice and then simply remain at the neutral vegan level or the term that I coined for this, self-veganism. Concerned only with cleansing our own bodies of animal products, focusing only on what we put into our own mouths, is simply another level of complicity. Unless we take steps to educate as many other people to, to also join us and to stop using animals. We have a duty to others committing atrocity also. We need all vegans to move from this self-veganism to active veganism. Veganism is about far more than self-gratification. We need to be selfless and industrious in our mindsets. Change is not so much down to initiatives rolled out by animal rights organisations, but it's far more about each and every one of the millions of vegans around the world. Vegans must now unite worldwide under a single common identity and concentrate on advocacy. It is with this in mind and the growing problems that we face that I want the international vegan flag to represent our resolve and our unity as that single identity. By the way, I'll just contradict the Vegan Society who said they're following the definition as coined by Donald Watson. That's when they tried to rebuff my definition of veganism a few months back or so. Donald Watson did not coin a definition of veganism. He was replaced by the chair of the Vegan Society, Leslie J. Cross, in 1951. Watson was long gone from the Vegan Society up to Keswick by then. He was never seen again. Okay, it was Leslie J. Cross who coined the definition of veganism in 1951. So many myths about Watson. Great guy, so many myths. He didn't even coin the word vegan. That was his wife, Dorothy. Well, I could go on about that forever. I won't bore you with it now. It was Dorothy. He had to dance in Leicester, 1944. Okay. In 2017, I learned about the creation by Gad Akimi from Israel of the international vegan flag. Having spent many years Considering the current definition of veganism, I realized in light of the increased kill figures, it now needed improvement. And so, in 2017, I wrote a definition of veganism out of pure necessity. Necessity, not will. I've, I've followed the Vegan Society for many years, I still do, they do great work. But we must have a definition that fits. I then showed this definition to Ronnie Lee, who made contribution to it in the hope 
that we can get adopted by the international vegan flag to create four greater bases for incre in in uh, increased activism and contribution across the entire world. The vegan society definition I'll read out first. Veganism is a way of living which seeks to exclude as far as possible and practicable all forms of exploitation of and cruelty to animals for food, clothing or any other purpose. It's okay. My definition of veganism has now been adopted by the International Vegan Flag Organization is as follows. Veganism is a way of living that seeks to exclude as far as possible and practicable all forms of exploitation of animals which extends beyond dietary considerations to the avoidance of all types of animal use or abuse including harm to their natural habitats. It includes a moral duty to actively oppose animal exploitation by encouraging and educating others to become vegan with the core aim being the eradication of speciesism. The Vegan Society definition talks about what we should not do, self-veganism again. If global kill figures were fast decreasing, this might be slightly more understandable. We could just wait and eventually the job's done. That's not, that's not happening. The fact is, they're not decreasing and time is quickly running out. It's five to midnight now. There is no time left. This is why I added a sense of moral duty to educate others. Because I had to add that in. Also, where is any mention of the second biggest human impact upon non-humans, habitat destruction? How can you have a definition if you don't acknowledge that? Prevention of atrocity applies to all others around us, not just ourselves. Donald Watson wrote, change does not occur without substantial effort and determination, individually as well as collectively. Is this not then supporting the inclusion of the words moral duty to educate. Yet the vegan society somehow refuse to consider this as logical. Substantial effort, he says. Okay, substantial effort. So if it is required, then why not spell it out? If, if the duty is not a vegan's duty, then whose duty is it? We do have a duty. We are all they have. We must be their voice. And where in the Vegan Society definition does it mention any ultimate core objective? Every definition needs a core objective. People know what the ultimate aim is. How we achieve a shift in the human mindset. How do we do that? If we don't if we do not make the world aware of the species attitudes that are at the very stem of the problem and to make people aware of the unacceptable prejudices and attitudes towards animals. Hence, I added into the end of my definition the core aim being the eradication of speciesism. It has to be in there. You couldn't have an anti-racist group without mentioning racism. We're against speciesism. It needs to be in there. I just wanted to mention a little bit now about, the, about what our real focus should be. Now, now we have a definition that provides a far, far better ideological basis, uh, which inspires, hopefully, increased contribution from all vegans. Because there are, of course, always things that people can do, no matter what their personal circumstances. Excuses will not save a single animal. I, you know, people have rejected my definition, saying, oh, it's, it, it's uh, ableist, ableist, ableism, yeah? No ableism here. It's utterly ri ridiculous. The animal abuse industries will do everything they can to ruin veganism, and they will become far more proactive, <laughs> throwing huge sums of money, as they already are, at pro-animal consumption campaigns. 
This is why we should focus less on the endless chat about vegan donuts, pizza, cake and sausage rolls or YouTube celebrities and focus our minds on the job at hand. Keep the focus, keep our eyes firmly fixed on the immense task ahead and upon our own personal contribution. We must go beyond Facebook and cake. We must. We need to get out onto the streets supporting any vegan actions whenever we can. Get the information out, support every demo, march, stall, door dropping event, etc, etc, etc that we possibly can. We need to give our time as currently only a fraction of 1% of vegans, or what we could really say, are truly active. We live in very strange times. 30 years ago, I dreamed that one day we could see a couple hundred thousand vegans in the UK. As based on the output back then, I knew, I thought I knew, that this would cause utter chaos for the abuse industries. Now we've got what? 850,000 vegans? They're not here today, are they? Okay, I was wrong. This was not to be the case. We grew in number, but we did not grow in resolve. In some ways, we have missed our chance. We went to sleep. It's time to rise again. All vegans, get up, out of the armchair, get active and get the job done! <laughs> Something that worries me a little bit is, this, uh, is, is the dilution. I want to talk a little bit about vegan dilution, I call it. Uh, uh, for instance, you know, uh, the rise of these new concepts such as uh, flexitarianism and reduction, oh my God. Oh. You know, uh, I mean, any, any reducitarians out there? Free flexitarians? Pescatarians? No. No, no, veggies? No. Oh, this is a good one. Veggie balls? No. Politarians? I don't even know what that is. <laughs> oh, God. I'm not going to mention pescatarians. Just, oh, I did mention them, my God. Okay. Moving to veganism is the idea, of course. But is that really what any of the above weird titles, these new things are trying to make it into? Is that any what, what they're doing? I mean, I know it can take some people a very long time to realise that murder is not actually right, and maybe even longer to embrace compassion. But as vegans, we must never encourage or praise at any level Part-time animal abuse. Choo yeah. Never. Choosing death some of the time is not okay. Arbitrarily choosing to flex in and out of animal abuse whenever it suits us. Uh, our taste buds on certain days only. This kind of abuse is okay. This, that, that kind isn't. I'm vegan on Saturdays, which is great because I'm on the march on that day. If I can get through the weekend, I can have a bacon sandwich on Monday. You know, oh God, oh please don't criticise me. You, you'll scare me and you, you, you'll turn me back the other way again and I'll, and I'll blame it all on you, Tom, for preaching to me. Yeah, really. Okay, to all the flexes. If you know about the suffering, just stop it. <laughs> Go vegan instead! Stop! Stop pretending veganism is difficult! I used to say to some people, oh, you know, I know it takes it's a bit tricky, but you know, I don't think it's not difficult anymore. We should never sell encouraging one to see it as difficult. It's not difficult. The only difficult bit they've got to do if they if their if their intention and their compassion is truly there, then the decision will always be easy. Reducitarian, flexitarian, uh, they're not things, you know. And anyone seeing it as, a, as, a, as a some kind of new new thing to do so to remain like it. If it's a bridge, fair enough, you know, you, you get a few weeks, get your head around veganism. But, you know, you don't need a title for it then, do you? If it's only going to be a few weeks or so while you educate yourself. So, you know, why do they have to have these new permanent titles? You know, to, to, to loosen those feelings of guilt and to pat themselves on the, the, the back, you know, feeling that th this is kind of enough. It's not enough. 
Halfway houses have no connection to ethical veganism. A pick and mix exploitation and murder like it's some kind of game. Contributing to suffering five days a week instead of seven is not engaging in an ethical lifestyle at all. And it's not any side shoot of veganism. Woo! Okay, so eating human it is a statement, yeah, yeah. Eating human children and enslaving them is not okay. Human children, yeah? We all agree on this. So if I say it's wrong to kill humans 100% of the time, yeah? Pretty much all agree with this one, yeah? So let's just add two words. It's 100% wrong to kill non-human animal children 100% of the time. Oh my God! You're an extremist! <laughs> you're a nutter! That's absolutely ridiculous! You're totally mad! Hold up! What, I mean, you know, I only had it like non-human. The whole context changes. This is social condition and this is the mindset. This is what this is speciesism. This flexi, trendy, arbitrary view towards animal abuse actually supports and seeks to legitimize species attitudes. It shows that people do not understand at all the most basic objections to animal use and abuse. It's just so stupid, a mental block. Just stop doing it, go vegan. To all the trendy celebrities out there jumping on the flexitarian bandwagon to win a few more fans for the most part. You're omnivores, the same as before. <laughs> I know it's a shock for them, but you know, they've always been able to eat plants as well. This is the serious bit of this though. Egg sales are now rising relentlessly, with the highest egg sales since the 1980s. A 4% increase year on year for the last 10 years. 36 million pounds in extra UK sales. And let's see what the British egg industry have to say about flexitarianism. Quote, the spike in egg sales can be colorated with the rise of the number of people adopting flexitarian diets. Egg consumption has passed 13 billion for the first time since the 1980s and we expect it to keep rising. 40 million male chicks ground up at one day old. This is what happens when we seek to dilute things down with little thought or any real resolve. It does not take years to figure out how to chop a few vegetables, open a, a bag of rice or a, a tin of chickpeas. We cannot increase the, no the murder of lots of small animals whilst feeling smug about eating a few large ones a little bit less often. A world of flexitarians and their many trendy derivative titles will spell disaster for animals and prevent animal liberation forever. Join with us, Flexis, and be a real part of the solution instead of part of the problem. Yay! There's a few words from somebody who knows all about suffering, about imprisonment and neglect. I'm going to read you a little bit about Edgar Kupfer. Edgar Kupfer was imprisoned in Dachau concentration camp in 1940. In his last three years in Dachau, he got a job in the storeroom and he wrote on notes of paper with broken bits of pencil and he buried them. He went back in 1945 to dig them up again after his liberation. Edgar Kupfer wrote, I refuse to eat animals because I cannot nourish myself by the suffering and the deaths of other creatures. I refuse to do so because I suffered so painfully myself that I can feel the pains of others by recalling my own suffering. I feel happy that nobody persecutes me. Why should I persecute other beings and cause, cause them to be persecuted? I feel happy 
I am no prisoner. I am free. But why should I cause other creatures to be made prisoner and throw them into jail? I feel happy. Nobody harms me. Why should I harm other creatures or have them harmed? I feel happy. Nobody wounds me. Nobody kills me. Why should I wound? Why should I kill other creatures or cause them to be killed for my pleasure and convenience? Is it not only natural that I do not inflict on other creatures the same thing which I hope and fear will never be inflicted on me? Would it not be most unfair to do such things for no other purpose than for enjoying a trifling physical pleasure at the expense at others, of others' sufferings and deaths. That's Edgar Kupfer. Okay, I'll just wrap it up. They have the right to breathe the same air as we do. We must create a far more, a far larger, unified, active, grassroots animal rights movement a hard-working mass of anti-speciesists who are less into self-gratification and refuse to ever state that veganism is just a diet when it is far more than that. It is a lifestyle. Some people see large organisations for veganism uh, as the authorities for veganism or animal rights. But they are just a few people in the office. And as good as their efforts will always be, it is all of you and the hundreds of thousands of other vegans in the UK and the tens of millions of vegans across the world. We've got 30 million vegans now, just in China alone, who must be the authorities of, the, of, an, of an anti species The voice for the voiceless. They are the only ones who can do the job. With some real belief, we can really make things happen. Only a vegan can educate a non-vegan to go vegan. Nobody else can do that. We must create a surge of millions of vegans who live and breathe ethical veganism, who are angry, fired up, yet focused, fully committed, relentless in their opposition to those who commit, commit these specious crimes. It's going to take hard work. There is only us. We are all the voiceless have. There are only hope in a dark world. It's time for all vegans to contribute, to create a kind of world that surely they must all want to see. Everyone can be active. Yeah. And if we have any chance at all, everyone must be active. Yeah. Who, who is holding veganism back? Is the animal abuse industry is holding veganism back, vegan progress? No. I'll tell you who's holding veganism back. Have a guess. Vegans. Vegans are holding the cause back now. Enough! It's time for all vegans to unite globally under the international vegan flag. It's time to feel some anger, some self-belief, no more self-veganism, no more excuses, no more laziness, no more stay-at-home veganism, no more vegan dilution, no more vegan complacency. It is not just happening. Nothing ever just happens. We have such a long, long way to go. It's going to take hard work and commitment from every single vegan. It's the only way it can happen. The time is now. Now let's get out there and veganise the UK to inspire other countries to follow suit. Thank you.